Hello everyone and welcome back to the studio. David Kessler here. I want to continue uh, today our discussion about consistency uh, for your work as an artist. Now if you remember the previous video on consistency we talked about uh, specifically with an exhibition if you're doing an exhibition of your work you know six or eight or twelve paintings whatever you know pick one kind of a thing that you do and use that as your theme for your exhibition. Today I want to talk a little bit more about um, the consistency of your work and what it looks like as a whole. You know, I think that every one of us has an image in our mind that comes, or actually an image that comes to our mind if we think about famous artists. Monet, we have that image. Van Gogh, we have that image. Picasso, Warhol, Manet. Pissarro, uh, <laughs> Hopper, Edward Hopper, Grant Wood. You see where I'm going with this? Is that every time you mention one of those names uh, or more uh, uh, recent uh, living arts, you know, uh, uh, Brian Rudberg, Wolf Kahn, David Hockney, Wayne Tebow. We all have an image that comes to our mind with those artists. And why is that? Because they have a consistent body of work and they have a sort of a signature look and feel to their work that comes to our mind when we say, yeah, Monet, yeah, I've got it. I know what kind of work he did. It's the same with my work, I hope. I mean, I'm not trying to put myself in the classification with those people, but <clears throat> I have one thing that I do and I try to do it better than anybody else. You know, I think there's this myth now that multitasking is something that actually works. And we can multitask four different things at one time and be good at all of those. Uh, research studies have shown that multitasking is a complete and total myth. Complete and total myth. And what it finds in the research is that if people try to do multitasking, they they regularly fail at all the tasks that they're multitasking at because they're not doing a good job at any one of those tasks. They're bad at all of them. So we can apply that to our painting careers also. When you try to do six or eight different things, I mean, I regularly talk to people and I ask them, well, what kind of media do you work in? Well, I use oil, acrylic, watercolor, collage, and mixed media. Oh, and, and occasionally, you know, I'll mess around with encaustics. <laughs> and there's, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with doing all that. But the chances of you being good at all of those types of media is next to none. It's next to none. And then throw on top of that, not only do you do six different types of media, then you also paint, land, you do landscapes, abstracts, still life, figurative work, and pet portraits. <laughs> I mean, again, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But if you look at the artists that are the most successful and have been the most successful, they don't do all that. They find a niche, a niche, well, niche, niche, whatever you want to say, <laughs> right? and they focus on that. Now, how do you do that if you're doing all of these things? You have to find the thing that is most important to you, the type of work and media that you like the best, um, something that people sort of know you for. That's how you find it. You know, I mean, I used to be a watercolor painter and painted basically, most of what I did was the building in the landscape. That was it, that's what I did. You know, or boats or, you know, but it was all landscape oriented painting. And they were good paintings. You know, I had quite a, a big following of folks. And then I tried, you know, doing abstract painting and the watercolor painting at the same time, abstracts and acrylic on canvas and then the watercolor on paper. And what I found after a while of doing both is that I really preferred the abstracts and I didn't really want to do the watercolors anymore. That was a personal choice. 
uh, but it was the best choice I've ever made with regard to artwork. The best choice I ever made because I gave up one thing that I really liked to focus on something that I liked more and I thought it was better at and I thought I could provide information for people better by doing the abstract paintings than the watercolor. If I'd have stuck down the road of doing the watercolor painting, I'd have just been another watercolor painter. Right? But I really found what worked for me best as an acrylic painter of abstracts. Uh, and it's been successful beyond my wildest dreams. Uh, and you can do the same thing. You just have to learn to focus on doing one thing. I mean, I have students in workshops, they can't focus in a one hour discussion. They're doodling around in their, their sketchbooks and all. They just absolutely have no idea how to focus. But to be really successful in what you do, you have to limit what you do and do it better than anybody else. That's my philosophy. I have a lot of people, professional artists, that completely disagree with me on this fact. That's fine. Uh, I mean, everybody's going to think differently about it. But all of the, the people that I know that are really good and really successful, this is what they do. They focus on one thing, and they do it better than anybody else. One thing and better than anybody else. My friend Brian Rutenberg says, you know, pick a label. He labels are good. The more you define the label of who you are and what you do, the better your work's going to be. And people, and people tell me, say, well, I don't want to do the same thing my whole life. Well, I don't consider that what I've done my whole painting life is the same. Now, there are artists that do what I do that are on the road doing teaching workshops that have been doing it for a long time. And I know some of them, if you look at their work 30 years ago and their work today, it's exactly the same. Because they've taken the signature look thing too far. Uh, I don't ever want to do that. I want my work to evolve naturally uh, for me as a painter. That's the most important thing, for it to evolve naturally over time. If I look back five years ago to what I was doing, my paintings were very different from what they are now. Very different. And I think if I look ahead five years, that's what I want to be able to say is that they look different through a natural evolution of my work in the studio. I don't want it to be the same. I don't want it to look the same. Uh, and it's different because the circumstances in your life are different. Things from a personal life might be different. You go through different things in your life. Your worldview changes. Your viewpoint changes. Your philosophy changes, the way you believe changes, uh, you go through tragedies, you go through happy times. All of that stuff affects the evolution of your work and makes it different as you move forward. So the way I look at it is if you pick one thing, do it really well, then that will give you variety over the years in your work. Uh, you know, and I, I mean, I always hear that you know, I hear the same argument. I don't want to be pigeonholed. I can't do just one thing. Then don't. If you think you can, then do it. I mean, it's going to be different for everybody. But if you really want to be successful, you really want to build a following for your work, uh, if you want somebody to walk into a gallery space or an exhibition and look across the room and say, yeah, that's David's work. I'd know it anywhere. That's what you want. Right? If, you're, you know, if you do all these different things and your work is not recognizable as your work, then how are people going to know the kind of work you do? You're not going to be known for anything. I'd rather be known for doing one thing really, really well and doing it better than anybody else. And that's my goal as an artist, is to have that sort of a, a look that people say they see, they know it's mine, and then... You know, I get a following of people because of that. I get sales because of that. I get followers on social media. I get followers on YouTube where this video is going to be. It all depends on what you want to do and how you want to investigate uh, things in art and what you feel comfortable with. But for me, I believe the more you define what you do and who you are as an artist, the more successful you're going to be. And if you try that, 
I know that that'll work for you just like it did for me. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps you move forward to be a better artist. Until next time, I'll see you.